I really believe that there are things that happen to us and most of our viewers can identify with great losses, relationship struggles, children born with disabilities, uh, some with incarcerated loved ones, some who had a man promise to love them forever who walked out on, on them and it, it's been so hard. And I think there are many who cry a lot, but you know, the Bible says in Psalm 34 that God is close to the broken hearted. When you're living in a life that's so different from what you expected, you have to look for God's joyful splashes, His <laughs> divine surprise. On the road to Mount Zion, there's a rock in the road and you can't get around it, but the rock is me. If you look for me, you will find me on the way, not in the way. And as we've hit obstacles in life, we are pressing into the grace place. Well, I think we, we need to have a new definition of what real joy is. Real joy isn't just having happy circumstances and a life without problems. Real joy is knowing that even when bad things happen in your life, if you know Jesus as your personal Savior, you have hope and a future that goes way beyond what this world can offer. Oswald Chambers said, Every hope or dream of the human mind will be fulfilled if it is noble and of God. Carol and Jean Kent's dreams for their only son were shattered in a phone call and obliterated in the judge's final ruling, 25-year-old Jason Paul Kent was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole or an appeal. 13 years earlier, Carol was presenting her Speak Up With Confidence as a graduate course at Briarcrest Bible College in Saskatchewan. I was one of her students. Carol and her sisters enjoyed Saskatoon berry pie in my trailer. I had just been asked to come to 100 Huntley Street, and it was so fun to share my secret with her. Through books and conferences, Carol has impacted so many lives. News of her devastating heartbreak was unthinkable. But as I said at the start of this hour, challenges to our hope can strengthen it. The Kent family chose not to waste their suffering. They established Speak Up For Hope, a nonprofit organization that helps inmates and their families to adjust to their new normal, providing them with encouragement and resources. Carol tweeted this week, Developing a faith that works requires practice, getting up every morning and putting one foot in front of the other, believing God is at work. From prison, Jason wrote, I'm learning that it really is all about God and not about us. Will we turn toward truth life and transcendence? Or will we curse the darkness and rage against a sense of futility, pounding our fists against the air with groans of frustration? We are already blessed in Christ. Romans 8:28 was true last week when you received the discouraging news, and it's still true today. The Kent family is proving God's promise to work all things together for good to those who trust in Him. Here's what I saw when I looked at hope last week. Holy optimism planted in the eternal. Christian hope isn't a Pollyanna optimism or wishful thinking that can lead to discouragement and defeat. Our confidence is firmly planted in a person, the one who conquered death so that we could live forever with him. This truth became deeply meaningful to Joe Amaral a couple of years ago after his father died of cancer on the last and great day of the Feast of Tabernacles. That's the very day that depicts our eternal home or tabernacle where those who trust in God will live forever with him. Do you know where you'd be if you died today? You can receive God's gift of eternal life by simply surrendering to him receiving the gift of His Son. Why not call our prayer line and get that settled today? <laughs>